Hey guys, welcome back. Leave a like so this video is recommended to others. And hit that subscribe button so you can keep seeing videos just like this. I'm not sure if you guys ever seen the Blair Witch Project, but damn. This is just giving me Blair Witch Project vibes. This eerie video comes from Creepy Outdoors on YouTube. I'll tag him below. And his channel focuses on ASMR-like content in the wooded areas of Canada. And he does this alone while listening out for the wildlife surrounding him. But this time, what he heard could not be mistaken for wildlife. But this is a good reminder why you should never hike alone. I'll let the rest of the clip play, but let me know, what would you do in this situation? Oh, hi. What the hell? I need to get out of here. Oh, boy. Oh. Okay. That was f***ing creepy. I need to get out of here. It could have been campers. But this area is extremely secluded. I need to get back to camp. Regardless if it's another camper trying to mess with him, it's still pretty creepy. His reaction seemed pretty real to me. That's all I would have done. Time to go back to camp. I don't think I want to be out here anymore. You could see him doing all the calculations in his brain. <laughs> this guy's going places. This guy's going places. Oh, now he don't want to get out. Oh, it's a bear? <laughs> wow, he's big! Holy sh**. He gone. Well, now go check your car. <laughs> I want to go with him, but I can't. Thank God it wasn't our good car. That's all I got to say. Oh I love how the cop took off immediately. <laughs> but I mean, what else was he going to do? It's not like you can catch a bear. I wonder how it got in there, though. You know, nothing really says my husband cares about my safety. Aside from when he goes out of town and leaves a crowbar and an axe next to the door that goes into your bedroom. Like, yeah, break in and chop her up. <laughs> she knows too much. Back to the drawing board. Yo, V, you're one of two guests staying at the lodge in rural Maine, and you see this MFR. I've already made the call. Oh, what? Is this legit? Oh, it is some creep. So the person recording must have called the cops because they saw him? Because he changes up real quick when they show up. <laughs> The Boeing whistleblower just turned up not alive. You know how Boeing's planes have been falling apart mid-air for the last year, like doors coming off, tires falling off mid-flight? Well, it turns out that this guy, John Barnett, who spent almost a decade as the quality manager for a plant making the 787 Dreamliner, one of the problem childs of Boeing, well, he retired in 2017, and he's been taking legal action against them ever since. He's been alleging things like, when a plane isn't getting built fast enough, 
they'll tell their dudes just to go and get scrap from the scrap bin, like broken parts and parts that didn't pass inspection, just slap them on there so the plane gets done in time. He also claimed that up to one quarter of the oxygen masks would fail if actually deployed, plus a number of other allegations that Boeing obviously denied. And then he wound up not alive in his truck in a car park on the, on the 9th of March from a, quote, self inflicted But the spooky part is what he did right before that happened. Because see, this legal battle has been going on for years now. But just this last week, he gave a formal deposition in which he was questioned by Boeing's lawyers. So Boeing's lawyers just asked him a whole bunch of questions under oath about what he knows. And then that same week, he turns out to not know anything anymore. Right before he was due to undergo further questioning on Saturday. So what did they find out that he found out that now we're not going to find out? I mean, allegedly, obviously. If it was like an accidental death, like a car crash or something, that might, you might be able to go coincidence. But like, who fights a legal battle for years and years and years? And then the, like, the year when Boeing's problems are all coming to light and proving you right, then you decide to off yourself. Like, once like the world is like totally turning to your side, then you're, you're over it and you're gonna just quit. I mean, really? So I don't know what's going on, but, uh, puts on Boeing. <laughs> This one's very fishy, dude. This is creepy in another way because it feels like we're living in a movie. And maybe you're not as safe as you think. That's what it feels like. Right, so I'm on the bus at Petrie Plaza on the O-Bahn. And look, the bottom of it's fucking messy. That's right, the O-Bahn. There's no tape around it, no caution sign, nothing. Knowing people, which includes me, you know for sure somebody's gonna fall down in that hole. I probably would, I'm clumsy as hell. What the crap is that? Somebody spilled their milkshake. Come on, dude. Wow. <laughs> well, that's officially totaled. What an idiot, dude. Like, did you slam on the brakes while going 100 miles an hour? Are those fish? What the crap? That is so freaking bizarre. I'm looking for an explanation for why this happens, but apparently nobody knows. That's so weird, dude. I don't see any water nearby in that video. Interesting lost mysterious locations, iceberg part seven. So the catacombs of Paris are obviously interesting, if not downright disturbing. Like this disturbing statue you can find down there called the Passer Through the Walls. Why do they make this? And while the main tunnel where they bury people is just over a mile long, the tunnels actually go on for a whopping 180 miles. So it's no wonder why terrible incidences happen down there, like when a 19 year old girl got lost down in there in 2005 and wasn't found until 2007 not alive though. So it's like a huge confusing labyrinth. Back in the day, a guy went down there and started decorating with the remains of people like he made a skeleton chair, he made a wall with the skulls that were deformed, and made a lot of weird stuff. And also, if you haven't watched the movie As Above, So Below, it's about the Paris catacombs. It's really good. They like, kind of like, accidentally go to hell kind of, and they're like, oh no, oopsie daisies, uh, how do we get out? But it's really good. Go watch that movie and follow for more. It's alright. It's not super disturbing. That statue itself is more disturbing than that movie. I had no idea that statue was down there. So this doctor, he has one goal. He wants to be rich. 
Let's call him Dr. F. Dr. F's an oncologist. He specializes in treating cancer and he's well respected, but he's not rich. And in order to get rich, one day he figures out this scheme. His scheme is that when his patients come in, he starts diagnosing them with cancer, whether they have it or not. He's like, oh, sorry, you have cancer. He Ew. then submits that info to the patient's insurance company. And the insurance company then pays him for giving the patient very expensive cancer treatment. Here's the biggest problem with that. Other than the fraud, not only does the patient falsely believe that they're dead, but they also have to actually go through that treatment. So then you've got a completely healthy person going through chemo and chemo can That's... you up. But Dr. F, he doesn't care. He's going to be rich. And to his credit, his scheme works. Suddenly he's getting paid left and right. He starts telling more and more of his patients that they have cancer and then they all start seeking treatment. So he gets even more money and then he buys a 6,000 square foot house and he expands his businesses. Now he has seven locations and then six years go by and he's still running this scheme and it is still successful. And at this point, he's convinced hundreds wow. of his patients that they have cancer when they don't and then he's pumping them full of chemo and he's pocketing the insurance money. And business is booming. And finally, bam, Dr. F has met his goal. He's finally rich. Until one day, this woman, Monica, she comes in to see Dr. F for something. And of course, Dr. F immediately diagnoses her with cancer when she doesn't have it. And he tells her she needs to start treatment right away. So Monica starts treatment. And after her first day of chemo, she feels like absolute in fact, she feels so bad that when she goes home, she trips and falls and breaks her leg pretty badly in two different places. So she goes to the clinic where she would normally see Dr. F. But this time, Dr. F isn't there. He's out of town on vacation. So another doctor's there making rounds in F's place. This doctor, Dr. So. So So looks at Monica's leg and he also starts examining the rest of her. And pretty quickly he's like, uh, this woman doesn't have cancer. And later he breaks the good news to her. She's not dying. She doesn't need chemo. And he advises her to never see Dr. F again. And that whole interaction makes Dr. So suspicious. And he starts investigating and he starts digging into all the patient's records, looking for more evidence that Dr. F is missed diagnosing people. Now around that time, Dr. So is at the clinic having a conversation with this guy, George. George is the office manager there. And George is like, hey, Dr. So, I heard you're quitting. And So's like, yeah, I'm quitting. There's some shady stuff going on around here. So then George gets suspicious and he starts investigating. He's checking records, he's interviewing staff, and he gathers tons of evidence. And once he looks at it all and realizes what's actually going on, he takes all this evidence to the FBI. The FBI gets the Medicare fraud strike force involved. Yes, that's a real thing. And then they look into this and they find that over the course of six years, Dr. F had committed $34 million in Medicare and health insurance fraud by convincing 553 people that they have cancer. So they immediately raid Dr. F's clinic and they arrest him and he's charged with all kinds of stuff and he gets sentenced to 45 years in prison and he has to pay a bunch of the money back. And all this happened in Michigan, so shout out to Michigan. Shout out Michigan. I can't believe they only gave him 45 years. They should have gave this guy life. Somebody put he should have been sentenced to chemo for life. I think this scares me the most. It's just incompetent doctors or corrupt ones. There's nothing you can do, man. Hey, did you guys know that the reason that Steven Seagal moved to Russia and got citizenship there was because he was found here in New Orleans with a bunch of women tied up in his basement? My safe space. Wait, 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 wait. Is this true? So two women accused him of keeping them in his basement in New Orleans. That man is a whole freaking character. That's freaking crazy. I thought he was just washed up. So do y'all remember the 85 year old woman who was by an alligator last year while walking her dog? Well, it turns out there was a lot more going on behind the scenes in this case. And now the family is suing the property management of the community that she lived in for wrongful Management company for the community that she lived in in Florida said that she was not allowed to walk her dog alongside the roads. They told her that she would have to walk her dog along a walkway that they owned over a mile away. They even forbade her from letting her dog out in the front yard, which is why she was in the backyard by this community lake. Spanish Lakes is one of these communities that has a rule. You can't walk your dog in the streets of your community. In fact, Gloria was given a violation and eviction warning for walking her small dog in the front yard of her house. Yeah, they threatened to evict her for having her dog in her own front yard. And not only that, the property management knew about the 10-foot gator that would eventually eat her. 
and they never bothered to have it removed. The lawsuit alleges that not only did they know about the alligator, but the staff of the subdivision would regularly feed it. Joe. Oh. The gators were there? Yeah. Everybody knows the gators. Not only did they know that this what? giant gator was there, but they had nicknamed him Henry in the community. There is a program in Florida called the Statewide Nuisance Alligator Problem, where they will remove alligators that are over four feet long for free. All you have to do is call them. This company was so involved in the lives of its residents that they would threaten to evict someone over walking their own dog, but they somehow didn't manage to find the time to remove a dangerous predator from the community. But then they had the nerve to come out in a press release and say that it was basically Gloria's own fault because she knew that the gator was there. But what do you all think? They were feeding that thing. What is wrong with them? It was 10 feet long. That's a monster, man. You just have it in a pond surrounded by vulnerable people. Make it make sense. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> you all right? You all right? You kept that all right, didn't you? You want a rally career, you? Well, at least it was a nice guy. My dude was about to go out like a bowling pin. Things you didn't know the purpose of. That is called a drip catcher, and the point of it is that when it's in the dishwasher, water won't stay up on the top. It'll drip through. The random fabric that comes with your new clothes sometimes are test pieces for you to wash them and see how they are affected before you wash your actual clothes. The tabs on the end of an mm. aluminum foil box hold the aluminum foil in place while you're using it. That's a microphone for your camera. This lettering on a makeup jar indicates the expiration time and when you need to replace your makeup. Lines on the X-Acto knife allow you to snap off the dull blade and add a fresh one. The extra holes in Converse are just there for ventilation. The hole that's on the end of a ruler is there specifically for you to be able to hang up your ruler. This hole is also for hanging up your pants. These colored squares on toothpaste tubes are used in the manufacturing process to align the packaging properly. The loops on soda cans can be turned around and used for straws. The dimple on the bottom of a wine bottle is called a punt, which increases the strength of the bottle as well as helps in the sedimentation of wine when it's aging. The foil one doesn't work, dude. Stop lying. Most of these are super obvious, except for that first one with the mugs. I didn't know that one. The more you know. My guy turned around like he was John Wick. <laughs> That's pretty lucky though. They almost got knocked off the boat. Whatever hit them must have been huge. So imagine watching America's Most Wanted just to realize the guy they're looking for is literally right behind you. Basically, in 1992, the cook at the Green Pear Cafe in Utah had just been murdered by a bandit named Adam Golly. Unfortunately, however, Adam actually managed to escape before the police could catch him. So America's Most Wanted soon featured him in one of their episodes, hoping that someone would recognize him. When this episode aired, the rest of the workers at the Green Pear Cafe obviously all tuned in to watch to hear the latest updates. When the episode ended, most of these workers simply went back to work, but a couple actually decided to stay to watch the next episode. And these workers were probably really glad they did, because the moment they saw who was on the screen, they immediately called the cops. You see, this next episode was highlighting a completely random Lester named Kenneth Lofty. When his face first appeared, the workers joked that he kind of looked like their new cook in the back, who had just replaced the guy who had gotten but after a few minutes went by, these workers were suddenly like, wait a minute, that's actually him. As it turns out, although Kenneth had committed his crimes more than 1,300 miles away, he had somehow ended up working at this exact cafe. Since Kenneth had just been cooking in the kitchen at the time, the workers were able to quietly call the cops. He ended up serving seven years in prison. Another light sentence, seven years. I can't imagine the amount of fugitives there probably was before the internet. They could commit crimes and then just literally leave the state and go to the other side of the country and start a new life. At least it's a little harder to do that now. Bird is such a vibe. Little guy's just minding his own business in the most beautiful way. Another day, another fishing into somebody's wall. Let's get rid of some of this. What is this? Oh, tough. Nope. <laughs> nope, back in the wall. Never to be seen. I think I just found the craziest slash creepiest thing I've ever found in my house. Putting um, insulation up in the rim joists. And I have this little crawl space area that juts off. Um, my basement and I see this hole and I decide to look inside to see what's in here right and I have a headlamp on right now 
and my phone light, and I cannot see the bottom. I just got home, and I see this, like, hole in my wall. And, like, next door, I have a really creepy neighbor. <sighs> Let's take a look. What the? Oh, my God. Oh, my. Bro, was that an eyeball? The one with the person talking about their creepy neighbor, that might actually be a peeping Tom right there. He drilled a hole through the wall. Serial Thomas Creech had just finished his final death row meal as Idaho's longest serving death row inmate fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, with a little side of ice cream before a glitch would go down in the chamber that would allow Creech to, uh, well, not just a quick background, this guy's been in prison since 1974 and claims to have as many as 26 victims dating back to when he was 15, although a lot of people call BS on the claims. Uh, he was implicated in at least nine convicted of five, and most of them were basically just because Creech felt slighted in some way. The case that actually got him the sentence came after he was already locked up. He came at this inmate who'd been grinding his gears with the old batteries in the sock method and fatally this guy. But anyway, he remained on death row for 43 years. Why? Speed it up. Last week, they begin to administer the lethal and let's just say it all went to hell in a handbasket. Eight attempts and 45 minutes later and Thomas Creech was still breathing and the warden was like, okay, well, guess we're not getting anywhere with this today. Go ahead, get the Creech back to his cell. This ain't he has veins, calling it a vein quality issue. It is important to note that Idaho hasn't carried out an execution in the past 12 years, so I don't know, maybe they're rusty. They're now reevaluating their options. Firing squad is even being discussed because that is technically still legal in Idaho, but they don't really have the means to be able to do it right now. I wonder if he'll get a second final meal. Wait, so this dude is still around? Why all the brainstorming, man? Keep it simple. They should just call up Canada. They got those pods, you know? I can't say the actual name of them, but they're their pods. New Orleans police announced that rats have overrun the force's evidence and property room, destroying evidence collected in drug busts. The rats eating our... Uh, they're all high. The police superintendent said there is an infestation of rats in the department's headquarters and that police officers have also found droppings on their desks. She spelled out the problem as the city council moves forward on a plan to move the headquarters to a different building. Is a different version of Ratatouille we didn't get to see. <laughs> that is not a bird you want to touch. That was the hooded pitoey, the only poisonous bird in the world. You can only find these guys in Papua New Guinea, and they share the same turf as a highly toxic beetle known as the malarid beetle. And these beetles are their main food source, which is what gives them their poison. Everything, their feathers, their skin, their tissues are all poisonous to the touch. Literally just touching this bird can take you out. Call me crazy, but that's what? not fair. Poison shouldn't be able to fly. It's actually the same poison on the golden dart frog. You know, the frog that can take out a full grown elephant. Oh, and the poison is a very powerful neurotoxin, which basically means you'll be paralyzed, followed by a shortness of breath, and then eventually no breath. All of that out of such an innocent looking bird. Never judge a book by its cover. My guess is that one was captive. Otherwise, I don't think he would have posted the video. Moral of the story, if you're ever in Papua New Guinea, enjoy it. Just don't touch this bird. And as always, follow for more facts. That sounds like a dangerous place to be then. <laughs> I hope those birds never leave that island. Get over here. <laughs> what you doing? Easy, fella! <laughs> she really hit him with the easy fella. Yo, whose grandma is this, dude? <laughs> Somebody needs to tell her that's dangerous. She's a real-life gator whisperer. It is February 28th, 29th, 28th, 29th. I have got me a better quality camera to catch this thing in the sky. And holy moly, I am scared. I'm scared, but I'm not going to trip because I've been catching this thing for a while now. It's very ominous. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. It's a huge face looking right down on us. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit brighter. There he is. There's the moon. Oh, I lost it. There it is. Let's see if I can get a better picture on the moon like it's supposed to. Is my hand in front of the thing or something? All right, here we go, here we go. There 
it is. Look at that. Yep, there it is. There it is. The camera makes it so clear. There it is. Is that like some guy in the sky with the flashlight? Are we his science project? What's happening here? It is kind of unbelievable the number of people that think this one's real. It's a little concerning. I'm like scared. Uh, there is no one standing there, but there is a silhouette like a shadow of mm. this man seemed invisible to everyone around and look at what he does pay close attention I am witnessing a glitch in the matrix and I swear to God if this squirrel doesn't come back out I'm gonna have a panic attack because see, do you see his nose? I'm not going crazy. Oh my god, wait, stop it. There's nothing there. There's not a grate there. There's not a grate there. Where did this just come from? What the f He just came out of nothing! Don't run towards me! Those were all horribly fake, except for the guy doing magic. My boy's just doing magic in a Starbucks, and nobody seems to care. That was pretty cool. In our continuing series, Moms in Focus, Sidious Jan Crawford finds necessity is truly the mother of invention. That is crazy. Look at the snow stuck up on the bottom of it. Snow NATO. Right? Especially when you have to keep your eye on the one. That I've never seen before. Here I can just Damn, where do you live? Because that is beautiful. But also, I thought tornadoes couldn't form on mountainous areas. Isn't that why there's so many tornadoes in like Kansas? I'm so confused by this right now. Maybe it's all the uh, weather manipulation we've been doing lately with all the cloud seeding stuff. Are you serious? <laughs> That's a deer who has nothing to live for right there. Dude, look at this comment. These insurance scams are getting out of hand these days. <laughs> deer legit are so stupid, man. I've had so many close calls with them. I gotta calm down. I gotta keep my breath stable. The, the water might be coming out of... Those releases right there. This terrifying video comes from The Sky Life on YouTube. I'll tag them below. And while doing some catch and release in front of a dam, he got the scare of a lifetime because he saw the signs but decided to risk it because you can find these signs around locations like these and they're there for good reason. Warning of dam releases or even dam breaks. Now thankfully, he got away with minor scratches. But one thing's for sure, if you ever see these signs, just go the other way. But let me know, what would you do in this situation? I gotta calm down. I gotta keep my breath stable. The, the water might be coming out of those releases right there. Oh, oh, come on. Hopefully she falls to the floor. Where's the water gonna come from? It's not coming out of there. I'm staying fishing. Where is the water coming from? I think they false alarmed me. Can't tell. I just sprinted my from all the way over there. I was terrified. Man, I was in the middle of the river over there and I saw a sign earlier that said alarm sounds three times the water will raise rapidly and I'm saying beneath these things if they open them up this river will turn into the Niagara so I booked it over the rocks banged my leg up pretty good and what do you know the water didn't even rise at all some people are just built different I guess <laughs> I see signs like that and I'm not going anywhere near that water to each his own though
Don't do. Broad daylight too. Oh my god, the comments are just roasting this guy. He should put that much effort into getting a job. <laughs> Check your local buffet if you want to find him. A well-deserved roasting. Well guys, that's all I have today. Thanks for hanging out with me again. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you're awesome and I appreciate you. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.